Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM20 story, Save the Silkman with Macclesfield Town. I'm Daniel and today we're back for episode 5, which seems a little bit of a strange one, but is probably by far the biggest in the series. And the reason for that will become clear in a moment. However, there's some bad news going into it. We come into this game against Hartlepool away from home in the FA Cup in the worst form of the season so far. We've tried to do a team talk or a team meeting to get the boys out of the rut and they've all turned against us and we are now in a huge hole going into a big cup tie. We play National League Hartlepool United in a potential banana skin in the cup and if we don't win this game, if you look at the finances, administration is probably looming and looking at our form in the league now, we cannot afford that. So as it stands, we've almost reached minus 1 million again, which is essentially where we started this season. We're over £1,500 a week under our wage bill, so we're actually saving six or seven grand a month there. So I've no idea how it's been judged this badly. But as it stands, it looks like a repeat of real life. Problems off the pitch are going to outdo anything that happens on it. And we've just got to hope we can avoid administration or get back into form, because we are in big, big trouble. I've never actually been in administration in FM. I've taken over clubs after they've been in there, but I've never been involved during one. So I don't know if we get decisions on transfers taken out of our hands. I don't know how it works, but we're in big, big trouble. The overall balance is still minus a million. There it says 983 was that last month, but FA Cup prize money and then a big tie could save the day. So a non-league tie is what you would hope for. But away from home, a potential banana skin against a side doing okay in the National League, probably not the ideal. So if you are looking forward to this episode, please do put a thumbs up on the video. In the weirdest way, it is so crucial, despite not really being important at all. But an FA Cup run, so important for these lower league clubs, particularly ones in financially dire straits like Macclesfield. We've seen what's happened in real life, we need to avoid the repeat. Of course, we did continue this series yesterday, so if you have missed any of the story so far, you can catch up in the eye above with it. There's also the biggest ever episode from our Dorking Wanderers story, that was on Friday, and then the head coach is coming towards a thrilling climax, and that one continued yesterday too. If you haven't seen it yet, please do check out the Stadium Review series, that will be out today at half four, and I believe this week's one focuses on Stevenage, a club that's become a bit of a rival of Macclesfield now, for obvious reasons in real life. But we're focused on Hartlepool, and let me show you the stinking form that we're coming into this one on. We have not won a game since the last episode. We've only played four off camera. We lost 1-0 at Oldham, 2-0 at Cheltenham, 0-0 against Bradford, and then a 2-1 defeat against Carlisle. We had the lead and then conceded a winner late on. It is not going well. If we look at the dynamics, it is atrocious. The managerial support now okay. However, the dressing room atmosphere is woeful, the team cohesion is appalling. So there is a lot of work to be done. We're still not able to get people in, we've not made any signings at all, and we've not been able to get anyone out at all. Some of the players we've loaned out are improving, so if we do have financial trouble, we could get them back. But obviously the reason most of them are gone is because they were on bigger wages. So we are going to have a lot to ponder, but as we stand, we've got a chance to get through in the FA Cup. And that has to be the priority today. We've already got through in the leasing.com trophy, which isn't as much financial reward, but still has a little bit behind it. So the cups now almost have to become a priority. And today we've got the same situation with Hartlepool. We're missing Theo Archibald, who unfortunately is unavailable due to injury. As I saw my network save team Barnet lost to Shrewsbury, but we are missing Archibald. Tracy's still not back from his long-term injury. And we have got a lot of work to do if we want to get through here. 5,000 through the turnstiles up north. That's good for us. A share of the prize money, of course, at this level. A share of the ticket revenue, rather, I should say. So let's go and have a look at the 11 we're going to pick. And look at that morale. I think we're going to have to go and do some individual talks here. So let's try and get behind all of these boys. Where they're training well, we'll talk about training. And where they're not training well, we'll talk about their conduct. Because that seems to be the way to solve this. So Aaron Phillips is not training brilliantly. He's doing all right, by the way. So we'll just say that he's got good conduct. Nathan Cameron still wanted. If we're in administration, he'll be gone in January. So we're going to praise his conduct as well. And you get the picture. So we're going to do this for the whole of the 11 and 18. And we'll be back in a moment to announce the lineup, which will probably partly depend on the reaction of some. So based on the individual chats, we've gone for a couple of little changes. But as it stands, I think we're as strong as possible. 
We've had to put a few different players on the bench. We've, of course, got the option to have as many lone players as we want at the moment. So that's more helpful for this sort of game. And actually, I might take James Weir off because we've got loads of central midfielders. So let's get Gunnar on. Give us an attacking threat. So this is the squad we've gone for. We've got Jonathan Mitchell in goal. Phillips and Habergum the fullbacks with Kelleher alongside Cameron. McCourt back in in a holding role. He's got a slightly better morale than Kirby. And he's back from suspension as well. We've got Chapman and Flanagan in central midfield. Cox and Lewis Potter on the wing. And Donovan Wilson in for Spyro up front. He scored more recently. He's more confident. And I'm hoping he'll be able to spark some magic. So into the first half we go. It is Hartlepool v Macclesfield in the FA Cup first round. And a win is crucial to our financial sustainability. Into the game we go. Please don't let us slip on the banana skin. 4-3-3 for Hartlepool. Same formation, probably more attacking at home. And we're going to encourage the lads. Is there anything we can do to be a bit more aggressive without losing our shape? I really don't know that there is. So do you know what? We've got everyone pretty much in their best role. We've got everyone working as hard as they can. We've taken off the play for set pieces, which doesn't seem to have changed much. So let's just go and get into it. A crucial game at Victoria Park. Let's see if we can get the right result. We badly need to recover today. Well, I'm a little bit annoyed. A quarter of the game gone. Nothing's happening. But six players look complacent. What are you complacent about? You're playing a team who you'll probably be sharing a league with next year. It's absolutely infuriating. But there we go. Back to Habergum at centre half. He's got it into Kelleher. From the throwing back to the left back. Habergum coming downfield. Long towards Wilson. And he's headed away as far as Lewis Potter. He heads it into Wilson's path. He's in one on one. And Donovan Wilson's missed a great chance. They're the sort of ones you can't afford to miss. Nil-nil, but that was the chance, I think. And now we've got the corner with Habergum. Normally has good delivery, and this time doesn't beat the first man. Just as I said it, I knew it would happen. Cameron recycles it, though. Back to Habergum. Tries to deliver again. Blocked again. Out to Ellis Chapman. England under-19 international. Back to Flanagan. And finally, some magic from that man. We've paid the big money for him a grand a week because we knew he could be a star. And he has finally delivered a moment. He's been so disappointing this year, but he scores a screamer from 30 yards. And it is just what we needed. Hartlepool United nil, Macclesfield Town 1. The FA Cup run and our financial future has just got a little bit more secure. Now we need to hold on. And it have done to half time. It is 1-0 as it stands and we have been the better side. We're going to tell the lads they've done well because the assistant has agreed, Danny Butterfield. Most of the lads still look complacent though, and I know they're delighted, but this really frightens me. They've still got good players, Hartlepool. They're not really a great deal between them and us. We're a bottom end side in League 2. They're a good National League team. And tradition has always said there's not much between that. And now it's Hartlepool with a corner, an hour on the clock. Nicky Featherstone takes it, Little flicks on, and Aidan Keener has put it in. It is 1-1. And that is why complacency is so bad. I'm so frustrated that that's the reaction of our defensive outlet. Why are they complacent? Habergum's getting hooked. Fitzpatrick at left back. He's got experience. Hopefully he won't have the same. Spyro's going to come on on the right wing. Just takes a little bit of pressure off him really. It'll be a winger on support. In fact, we'll put him on attack. And let's see if we can get on the front foot again. 1-1, one, one, a replay, not a disaster as it stands. But we want to make sure that we don't go out. I just saw Dawkins had had a player sent off in their tie. Had an all non-league game there. And Flanagan's got a free kick. Oh, he's on fire. Key and Flanagan, you have turned up today, son. No goals all season. No assists. No creativity. And today, he has scored two screamers. What a free kick from Key and Flanagan. And we're back in front almost immediately. Exactly what we needed again. Brilliant stuff. And just 20 minutes to hold on. And we've got him throwing at left back with Fitzpatrick. Into McCourt, who's had a really good game in that holding role. Been allowed to dictate the play a bit. And here he is again. Throws long over the top towards Wilson. Flick down and Liddle clears away. Only as far as Phillips. To Spyro out on the right. Unusual for him, but should take the pressure off. Not expected to score all the goals out there. Phillips into McCourt. Can he orchestrate another chance? Lovely switch of play, but Southern Hales is there. And Lewis Potter just sort of gave up on the run. And now it's over the top to Keener. He's already scored one. And now he's scored two. The defence has been so arrogant in this game. So arrogant is frustrating. Aaron Phillips now is going to come off. Corey O'Keefe on for him. Because to be honest, I can't take the complacency. And now half of them look anxious. 
A bit late to be doing that, isn't it? 72 minutes gone and it's now 2-2. And for a side that defends and doesn't normally concede many, they're now pressured by our feedback and this is not going well. We're at real risk of financial ruin here. As Keener picks it up again. Back to Lidl. Lidl inside, nicked by Flanagan. Great work. But he only hoofs it long downfield and there's no one there. Donovan Wilson's not even chasing it, really. Odessina down the right. Chapman intercepts. He does he get the foul? He doesn't. It was definitely a foul, I can tell you that. Spyro on the right-hand side. Two up with him. Flanagan's inside. If he needs him, though, he's going alone down the wing. Now back into Flanagan. Might as well shoot based on today. Delivers to Lewis Potter. Flicks onto Wilson. He's offside. I could see that a mile away. He does put it in, but it remains 2-2. Nothing to get excited about yet. Ten minutes to go. Hartlepool 2, Macclesfield 2. And now we get a warning to close Keener down. That has got to be a joke. I mean, he's as good as any of our strikers. But what a time to suggest that. Four minutes of stoppage time. And we've got an attacking throw. O'Keefe into Wilson. Back to O'Keefe again. Delivers to the back post. Hales flicks away to Luke James. Back to Reigns, the centre half. Long hoof downfield. O'Keefe heads away. Only as far as the left winger though. And he's absolutely skinned him. Please don't throw it away like this. Keener's in for his hat trick. He cuts it back. The goalkeeper's gone wandering. It's blocked twice. And it's out to the left wing. I do not know if we're going to hang on here. And Flanagan nicks it though. He's been inspired today. And he's going alone. Key and Flanagan down the right wing. Two in the middle if he can find them. Flanagan crosses. Reigns heads away. Luke James chasing. But Fitzpatrick will get there. And that's the end of the highlight. And the end of the game. A wonderful second half. Key and Flanagan the saviour. And we were a one-man team today. Hartlepool United 2, Macclesfield Town 2. And we'll be doing it all again in about 10 days' time. What a fantastic performance from Flanagan. Two wonderful strikes. And that is the only reason we're still in the FA Cup. And in fairness, a replay might give us more income. Let's go and have a look at the inbox. It's on as even. And to be fair, it was a very even game in the end. Hartlepool came on strong. Flanagan did well. Hopefully that gets his confidence up. Hopefully the result builds a little bit as well because we did get a point. What we're going to do though is skip ahead to Monday. We've got the FA Cup second round draw. See who we'll get if we get through. And then we'll see if this first tie has affected our finances at all. So we'll be back in a moment for the big cup draw. And hopefully some good news on this front. Well we're back for the cup draw as promised. And things are starting to go wrong yet further. Two injuries this time. Ironside only a fringe player, but one we were looking to get off the wage bill, and that's not going to happen now. Also one we would have used as a backup in the trophy. Ellis Chapman also out for a couple of weeks. He will miss the replay, which is of course in a week and a half's time. He will also miss this game and the Mansfield one. So we're in a little bit of dire straits now, but let's go and see if there's any good news. What we want in this tie is to beat Hartlepool at home, then get a non-league side at home, and then get a big third round tie. So let's see if that's the case. We're going to draw them one by one. Filed first out, the sort of side we'd like to avoid. And Grimsby have drawn them, the bottom side in League 2. Dulwich Hamlet, similar. They've got Chesterfield or Boreham Wood, so a non-league side into the third round. Gillingham, a League 1 side at home we've got to avoid. Crawley, an all-League 2 side we'd like to avoid. MK Dons, Bristol Rovers. Bradford or Lincoln, would have been okay because we would have got a big home support, but we've avoided them. Right, we've got a home tie. Hartlepool or Macclesfield. So let's have a look at who we'd like to draw. See, I'd like at home, like a Gateshead. I know we're being disrespectful here and we could get shocked. But Gateshead are in the National League North. And to be honest, I think they're the only ones left. So we're going to have to hope for them or a National League side at home. Please don't let it be bad. Chorley or Kidderminster, that would be a nice one. And don't let it be like a League One side that are good but don't have a big following. It's a big side. It's Rotherham United. The same team we're playing in the leasing.com trophy tomorrow. But I tell you what, a well-supported club at the top of League One, that might get us a big crowd in. Equally, they might think that they can get away with their backup side and it might give us a chance. But is it enough to financially save us? I don't know. So it is going to be a League One side at home. The third round dream, probably over. But it could have been worse. That's one of the biggest sides we could have got. So let's have a look at the finances. They've somehow got worse. Despite the gate receipts, it's not really covered the wage bill. So unfortunately, we are now over a million pound in debt. And as it stands, Macclesfield Town are in a world of trouble. This embargo thing's gone a bit quiet. It's been going on at least, what, a month and a half now? 
There's been talks regarding a takeover. There's been an embargo in place. And we can't bring anyone in, even on free deals. And of course, we can't afford to now. But it is becoming a big problem for us. So I hope it gets resolved eventually. Even if it is administration, let's just get it done and let's get a new owner in. But off the pitch peril, going to dominate this story just as it did in real life for Macclesfield. And unfortunately, our form has led us sliding down the table. I think we can kiss goodbye to the playoff dream anyway. And now it becomes all about staying up. The gap is nine points. It really needs to be 12 because administration surely almost certain now. So if you did enjoy this episode and that very bizarre cup tie, it was on a bit of a knife edge, please do put a thumbs up on the video. The plan is we try and beat Hartlepool in the replay and we'll be back for the second round, which should replace the crew game. Or in fact, no, it will go the week in between. So we'll show the second round tie and then possibly the crew match as well. So if you are looking forward to that, please chuck a thumbs up on it. Let me know in the comments what you thought of that display. Our demise in form, which is sending us down the table. The team turning against us in the dressing room. And more importantly, this huge financial deficit is something that has really harmed Macclesfield in real life. And I'm so worried it's going to do the same here. We said the finances screen would be the star of the show. At least we're not lying. So hopefully better news to come in that one next time. We will be back with this weekend series next Saturday at 1pm. So if you want to make sure you stay up to date and don't miss any of the action, subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. You'll get alerts as daily FM20 content releases. We've got our two long-term stories continuing throughout the week. Our stadium review series later today at half four and our weekly live stream on Tuesday morning at 10am. So if you are available and want to get to know us a bit better, please do come along for that. We talk food, football, FM, all sorts of sport. We just talk a bit of everything. It's good fun. Finally, you can catch up with the podcast channel in the eye above. There's a link to our Macclesfield episode there, reacting to, of course, the news that they were relegated by an EFL upheld appeal. And we've also got interviews with professionals, match day vlogs, and much, much more over there too. So hopefully, if you're a football fan, it's something you'll really enjoy. But a massive thanks for watching this one and your continued support of this new series as always. I really do appreciate it. And we will be back next time to see how much in debt we are and whether we're in the second round of the FA Cup and if a big league one side in Rotherham can save this big financial hole. I hope to see you there. <laughs> <laughs>